This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Kravitz, the guy I love to talk to. Boy, do I love to talk to this guy. Hey, Alex. Because you're so worldly. You know, you're one of the smartest, most worldly people I know. So I. Well, you need to get out and meet more people. I, probably, probably. Well, at this, right? age, at this age, I don't, I don't want to. I hate the human race. So. You know. <laughs> get a dog. So you were telling me as we first started out. I mean, you, the happy news that you you have a dentist appointment. Yeah, I can hardly wait. What? Oh, that's because of the uh, missing tooth, right? Right. Okay. Well, that's good. That's not bad. Well, first we're going to do x-rays and a cleaning. Oh, I love that. Before we can get around to taking care of that tooth, we've got to do some x-rays and cleaning. Right. And then they say, well, you know, we found some cavities. We better take care of those first. Right. And then, but you're going, I want to, I want to take care of this. this is what I came in for. Or right here. Right, right, I, right. That's right, what right. I came in for. I went in for a uh, implant because I had a tooth pulled. Right. And uh, I went in for an implant, and three years later they started doing the implant. Really? Well, because they kept waiting for my insurance kept getting used up, and they and they found oh, but first we d do the X-rays. Okay. Then, uh, oh, you've got a cap. You've got several cavities. We better take care of those. Oh, this needs replacing. Then, and I'm going. Wait a minute. Hey, what about the what about the, right. the implant? Yeah, we'll get around to that. We'll get around to that. Um, they kept trying to play out my insurance. Right. Okay? Uh, and that's wonderful. But if they just spent twenty five hundred dollars on my insurance, let's say. Right. I spent twenty five hundred out of my pocket as a copay. Oh really? Well, of course. It's not. It's not like it takes care of everything. The only thing it takes a hundred percent of is, I think, uh, cleaning. Right, That's cleaning it. and X rays. And they only allow two a year. And every dentist goes, you know, you have to come back in three months. No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm petrified of the dentist. Well, I. You know, it got to a point where I had so much work being done on my teeth, like in San Francisco, that right. I just, I just, I to begin with, my doctor in San Francisco always gave me gas. They don't give right. you gas anymore. You have to beg for gas, and then they charge you for it. Really? Yeah. In the old days, they just went, hey, you want some gas? Yeah, boom. Because, number one, it shut the patient up. Right. Okay? You go into La La Land... And, right. and they go, open your mouth, and you go. Right, right, you know, right, right, I mean, right, right, right. You, you, you're under, you are under my command, right? I was going to UCLA Dental School, mm -hmm. and they would actually put me under just to clean my teeth. Really? Yeah. Put you under? Right. Would they put a needle in your arm or something? No. It's like an like a outpatient surgery. Wow. Well, you mean cleaning your teeth? Well, I used to take the gas for cleaning my teeth. Right. You know, uh, because number one, teeth cleaning, the worst thing about teeth cleaning isn't any pain associated with it, although it sometimes can get a little dicey. No, it's that, that little you know, picky thing. No, you know what it is? It's boring. You know, they're spending an hour going, nee, 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 and you're, you're counting the quadrants they're going through. Okay, right. I got through that side. Now I got through that side. Well, I got them halfway through now. Now I got that. Right. And, and then um, then you always get a lecture from the person. About you, flossing you're, and brushing you're, you're about Flossing and brushing. How often do you brush? How often do you floss? I right. lie to them now. I lie what to them. What do you do? Them. Huh? What do you tell them? Well, I tell them that, oh, I brush twice a day and I floss every day. And they can't. So you brush once a day 
Ain't no floss at all. Oh, I maybe don't brush for three days. <laughs> Fuck it, you know. I mean, I'm trying to do it every day now. What I'm trying to do is to brush every day, floss every day. I'm trying to do that. And the reason I'm right. doing that is the next time I go to get my teeth clean, I want to see if she says, you know, you haven't been taking good care of your teeth. You know, I want that. Right. I want that lecture, and then I'm going to say, I've been brushing every day. I've been flossing every day. I've been right. rinsing out with Listerine every day. Fuck you. <laughs> You know, I wish I, I wish I could say that to the dentist. I haven't even met the dentist yet. Well, you you don't want to be nasty to the dentist. No, I got nasty with mine once uh, because she was she it was what was it? it, it I was getting a, a, um, a, um, a root canal, and she was just taking forever, and I was just you know I'm, uh, to begin with the thing I get tired of at the dentist is keeping your mouth open. Right. Because it starts hurting. And then sometimes to make sure that you can keep your mouth open, they stick a block in there. Have you ever had that? Yes. A little rubber block. Right. And then you're you're choking on your, your saliva. Right. Because that suction thingy isn't working too well because it's lodged in your cheek, <laughs> sucking skin off your cheek. <laughs> yes. Are we, are we, uh, are we, our audience is probably disappearing now as we talk about this because they don't well, want to, they don't want to hear to the, from uh, dent, uh, Alex, I went to the dentist once on LSD. No. Yes. It, did you do that on purpose? Well, I was on the way to the dentist and I ran into two buddies of mine mm -hmm. and they had just come from Uncle George. Yeah. Who was nobody's uncle, but had the best drugs in town. Yeah. And they had just coughed some acid. So I took a hit. And then I went, oh, fuck, I got to go to the dentist. <laughs> and I thought, honestly, I thought that the LSD would know all by itself not to kick in until I was done with the dentist. No. Kicked in. I'm in the chair. And they leave me alone. And I slide out of the chair, I take the bib off, and I walk out of the dentist's office, and I never walk back in. Really? Because I would like to know what it was like to get your teeth work done while you were on acid. I no. would think it wouldn't bother you because you wouldn't be in your body to feel it. Maybe. All I know is mm. I just didn't want to be there, and mm. so I left. Oh, wow. Wow. And then I, I didn't I didn't go back to that dentist ever. Well, he you, you know why you didn't? Because he would have gotten mad at you. Where did oh, you yeah. go? I had an appointment with you. I leave for a few moments, and you're not in the chair anymore. Had they already put the Novocaine in or anything? No. 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 So no, they no. hadn't started anything. And no. then he, you, well, I hate that when the dentist does that. That really pisses me off. Okay, when the dentist says. Okay, ho hold on. I have to go do a few things. I'll be right back. Right. What he's really doing, you know what he's doing, don't you? He's, he's got somebody. Really. He's got somebody else in another chair. Right. 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 So now he's dealing with that person. I had this happen to me a couple of times ago when I got the implant. He said, "I'll be back in a minute." A minute turned into about twenty minutes. Oh, I bet easily. You know, easily. and I said to him, "When the hell are you going to get me out of here?" Right. Yeah, because they're going back and forth between two patients. They're trying to see how many. In fact, I have one dentist that had three people in the chairs at the same time. And he's going really? back and forth, back and forth. I mean, I have to give it to him. He didn't give a, a root canal to a person who didn't need it because the person in the other chair was getting one. Right, but, right, you know, right. You know, I mean. Still. Yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. to wait around for the dentist. Well, my it's bad enough if you have to go to the dentist. Okay, my feeling is that for that kind of money, I want your full attention. Right. Okay, I right. deserve your full attention. Right. 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 And this, we'll be right back. You know, they say, uh, well, we're going to we'll give you the uh, Novocaine. Okay, we'll be back in a moment after to give that time to work. And I'm right. thinking, listen, it works from the minute he put the shot in, it started working. Sure. You know, and sure. by the time he gets to anything serious, it will have fully taken 
it's it's effect. effect. Oops, excuse me, I'm belching here. Um, would it take an effect? And and you know, uh, come on, don't don't leave me sitting here in this chair all the time with the bib on and the the suction thing going <laughs> inside of my mouth. <laughs> you know, it's it's ridiculous. But um, is this a cheap dentist or what is the deal here? Well. I told them what insurance I had, and they said they take it, so we'll see what happens when I get there. Okay. You, you may have to pay some of it, you know. It depends on how much, I guess, how much work they have to do. Is the whole tooth missing? Yes. Even the root? I think so. Uh-huh. And probably if the root were still in there, you'd feel it when you ate and stuff like that. Really? You think so? Yeah, you can look in there and see if it's. It, it, I mean, I, I, I guess whole teeth can be knocked out. Right. You know. Right. Usually, but sometimes... I was only eating raisin bran. It's not like I was eating Cap'n Crunch. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This happened. I thought you said you, you, you fell down or something. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, where did the Captain Crunch come in? I was eating, not Captain Crunch. I was eating. Raisin bran. Uh huh. And the tooth fell out, and I got up real fast, and I fell down. Oh, so the tooth came out before you fell down. Right. Why did the tooth come out? That's strange. It just fell out. Eating raisin bran. There was nothing wrong. Was that tooth ever loose or anything else? Because I had, I, one, I had one that was loose, and I refused to do anything about it, and I kept refusing to do anything about it. One day, the tooth comes out, and I figure it's the, it's a crown, right, from right. the tooth. And I go to the dentist, and I give it to her, and she says, oh, no, that's your tooth. You, right. You just did something. It self-extracted itself. And I went, well, that saved me money. Right, right. You know, and they took, a, right. they took an x-ray to make sure there were no chips in there or anything, and it was fine. So, you know. So, uh, you know. It's uh, three hours away, and I'm already a wreck. I wish I could take some Valium. You're already a wreck? Well, don't be a wreck. I mean, you know, remember this. You do have some say over this matter. Right. You know? I mean, there right. were, there, you know, I don't know why we get, we get, I get, I, we get very upset with doctors and, and dentists and so on about going to them, not realizing that really they're working for you. You're not working for them. That's right. That's right. But they don't seem to get that. Yeah. I mean, you, you've hired them to do a specific task. It's like, right. I consider dentists like carpenters. That's really what they do. They do basic carpentry on your mouth. Right. right. And then they and, gotta send uh, you out for a root canal yeah, yeah. and send you out for a cap. And So if I hired a, 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 a what do you call it, a, a carpenter to come in and build something, right. hey, I'm paying him. Right. Okay. Do the job for me. Right. And give me the best possible. So I got to tell you something. I, you don't have to deal with, do you, have, have you ever had to deal with a urologist? No. Okay. Well, you will eventually. Thanks so much. No, one day you're going to say, hey, I'm getting up five times a night to pee. This is ridiculous. Right. You know? Uh, and so you will then go to the urologist. And the urologist, the first thing that happens when you go to the urologist's office is they hand you a cup. Leave a sample. So they can test your urine. Right. Okay, that's even before you see the doctor. Everybody that comes in gets the cup. Really? Yeah, absolutely. So... Then you pee in the cup, okay? Now it's time to see the doctor. And you go in to see the doctor, and first of all, he says, oh, there's a little blood in your, in your, in your urine cycle. Right. And I go, it's always there, okay? <laughs> oh, all right, he accepts that. Right. Because just a, an aging prostate can give off a slight trace of blood. Anyway, so now he then takes you into another room. He then sticks a needle in you and draws some blood so they can send it out to get what's called a PSA test. And then, for an encore, he sticks his finger up your ass. Oh, God. <laughs> and feels around. So I have always hated urologists. To begin with, I said to my, my regular doctor, 
what is it with urologists? I can't find one I like. And he looked at me and he says, they're all weird. Right. He said, that's right, the, right. that's the, those are the weird people in the profession. Well, also like, um, a friend, I got a few friends that are doctors. Yeah. And I, and, and they said they always knew who the psychiatrists were going to be because they were the oddballs. They were the weird ones. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. anyway, anyway, so I never could find a urologist that I was happy with. I mean, they were all, there was always something. I had well, the last one I had before this one. You went into his waiting room and you felt like you were going in to get an abortion. Oh, well, really? I mean, the place was just, it wasn't that neat and tidy and clean. And then you go into his office and there are papers stacked up everywhere and he, you know, and and then he takes you in uh, to give you the the work up, right? And he was oh, he he loved doing the uh, uh, the what do you call what do they do when they want to find out if you whether you're having twins or not? Uh, oh uh, yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Anyway, he gives me one of those all the time, and then finally he decides that I'm I probably have to have a what do you call it a a, a biopsy because I may right. have, I may have prostate cancer. And I dropped him immediately. And I called my doctor up who had recommended this this guy who I couldn't stand. The one before right. him I hated. I absolutely hated. He he got my my penis infected at one point. And then I had another one before that who was crazy. And I one I went to that was holding court with all the nurses and the other doctors while he's trying to talk to me. You know, but they're all coming in and they're all having conversations and, and I didn't like him. So now this is this is gonna be the newest one and my doctor recommended this guy and I went to him. And I love the guy. Really? The guy is terrific. He saved my life to begin with because he said, I think you might have, uh, I think we've determined that you have prostate cancer. Not, right, not, not bad, but enough that something has to be done about it. Right. So he sent me to this doctor who gave me the, the radiation and then the seeds. And now he, he comes back. So I send, we, we have to test me the other day. Okay. Right. Again. And um, he just, he says, I'll, I'll email you tomorrow. So I figure ah, tomorrow afternoon, I'll get an email from whatever. No, he sends it at a quarter of nine in the morning. Really? Yeah. No detectable PSA. Congratulations, I'll see you in nine months. Oh, good for you. Know? you. And he is such a nice guy. And uh, the, the, my doctor did the radiation. I figured he'd do the PSA test, but they never got a hold of me. And he just told me, I had, th those guys did what they had to do. Come back to me now, and right. you never have to deal with them again. Okay. All right? And I'm just as happy. This guy is is terrific. He's, he's a pleasure to do business with. He writes nice notes to me, you know? <laughs> I mean, really. And I'm going, he can't possibly be a very good urologist because he isn't weird. Right, you know, right, The only thing right. wrong with him is yesterday when I went in, the uh, day before yesterday when I went in to get the blood test and the finger up the ass and all of that, um, he said to me, uh, he said, the first thing he did was tell me how he had problem getting air conditioning put in uh, his office and all the problems. That, and he's going on and on about it. And so I had to get a hold of the city and the city won't do anything about it. And I'm going, will you just stick your finger up my ass? Please? Oh, God. You know, but he's a nice guy. He's just terrific. And, and I was so, I'm, so I'm so pleased to have him because it was the w one thing I've always dreaded was going to the urologist, you know. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So. Well, I, I've never went, but I, I, I'm i dreading going to the dentist. I think your your viewers should um, tell us their, their famous dental nightmare stories. Yeah, well, uh, I, I used to love the dentist because he gave me the gas, and that put me out. And when I was working in San Francisco, I was doing the radio show. I was doing a TV show. I was, right. I was working constantly and I did a morning show so I was really tired throughout the day and and the when I knew I had a dental appointment I looked forward to it because it was the one time I could just completely relax because he would right. give me the gas I would go to sleep basically 
and it gave me time to rest. And nobody could call me while I was doing it. You know what I'm saying? In right. other words, it right. was a right. shield against the world. And so I used to look forward to going to the dentist, no matter what he was going to do. But now they don't give you gas and they, you know, and they, oh, it's, well, the great thing about gas is, folks, it's not that it puts you out, but it takes time and it distorts it. Yes. You know? I always felt like when I got gas, that when it kicked in, I was flipping over backwards. Really? Right. Yeah. And I would just go away. I would flip over backwards and leave the department. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, so I enjoyed going to the dentist. Um, but uh, urologists, you have a treat. You have a treat. I hope you find a good one. Right. You know. Thank you so much. I, I, I had one urologist years ago stuck his finger up my ass and went, damn it. I said, what? These damn fingers are too short. Oh, God. And I thought to myself, if you're a urologist, right. isn't one of the reasons you go into urology is because you've got big fingers? <laughs> you know, don't you go, Don't people go to the urologist conferences and go, look at these hands? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. check yeah. out these look, fingers. Look at that finger. Huh? huh? I can reach his Adam's apple. And also, I wonder, this is the finger where we go... Fuck you, right? Right. Why is that the finger they stick up your ass? You know, I, I've never looked to see what finger they put up my ass. Well, I know what finger it is. Well, I, I don't, and I don't really care. Yeah, I see him putting on the glove, and then he's going like this, you know. And Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, doctors are not fun, you know. No. And, uh, and, 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 and the older you get, the more your life revolves around doctors. Oh, it, uh, well... Uh, I Marjorie, literally my wife. Uh, it's a social occasion for her. Oh really? Oh yeah. I have my this dentist, and then I'm going to this doctor, and then I'm going to this and this. She has at least one or two doctors a week she sees. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. You know, there's one for osteoporosis, and there's one for this, and there's one for that, and she's got a chiropractor. And she's seeing one doctor after another, and it's like her. It's like a like a social thing with her. Well, good for her. I'm the queen of the ball. I'm going to another doctor. <laughs> uh, but I try not to go to doctors as much as possible. I mean, oh, me neither. You know, I know that there are certain doctors I have to see. I'm due to go in. I should go in and have my yearly with my with my doctor, and I have an eye I, eye appointment for with my eye doctor because my view. Vision is not as good as it was because I need an operation uh, on my what lids. Need, what do you need an operation uh, for? On my lids. My lids have to be tightened up here. Oh, it's, really? a med it's a medical thing, yeah. So it's taken care of by insurance. But then I thought, I mean, I'll get rid of the bags too, but they're not that terrible, are they? No. No, okay. So, no, uh, do you really want to look like your face is stretched, uh, yeah, stretched apart? Yeah, I'd like to get rid of this. This do lap I've got I'm getting yeah, a look turkey like, neck well I'm getting a look like I, I should be on a rock in the Galapagos you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah by the way I couldn't come up with a word today uh, because this drug makes me incapable of remembering things which drug is it it's called pregabalin uh, you probably know it better as I'm trying to remember. Uh, it's it's uh, for for uh, neuropathy for you know. Lyrica. It, it's a ge generic for a, I can't remember the name of it. See, is I, it Lyrica? Lyrica. Yeah, yeah. That's what I take. Oh, you take that too. So it makes you, you know what I'm talking about. You're a little loopy the next day, right? Yeah. I take it twice a day every day. Really? And you're uh, you get loopy from it? Not anymore. Oh, I do. But anyway. Uh, I, I wish I got loopy from something. So today, what I couldn't remember, right? Right. Was an organ that isn't needed anymore, like your appendix. If right. you were born it's without an appendix, you don't need it, right? Gallbladder. It, it, uh, gall, well, gallbladder, I think gallbladder does something, but you can take medicine to uh, take care of whatever it does, okay? And then um, uh, tonsils. And I'm trying right. to remember what the word was. I couldn't remember the word. And I've been using it all my life. Do you know what it's called? What? A vestigial organ. That's the term for it. I never heard that yeah. before. Yeah. 
And because a joke I was going to make is my wife said, so, uh, uh, you know, you, you want to have sex? And my reply was, well, my penis has become a vestigial organ. Uh, good night, everybody. <laughs> yeah. which, which it has, you know. With I mean, that, that's that's a great joke. Trouble is, you have to educate your audience to such a level. You, you really have to understand what vestigial means. But and it was a word I learned from my father. So, yeah. You know. Really? Yeah. Anyway, it looks like you know. I, I when I talk to you, the time just flies by. Just right. flies by, and we just talk about nothing in particular, and not we don't didn't mention comedy once today. No. Yeah. No, it's more like a, it's a conversation. It's a weekly conversation. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. And let's do it again next week, okay? Uh, all right, we'll set a date after we can say goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Pearl, right over Stephen there. Stephen Pearl. There he is. Uh, Stephen Pearl. Stephen Kravitz. I did Pearl yesterday. Will you, why don't you change your first name? Anyway, yeah. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Wait a minute. There we go. I, yeah. Oh, what happened here? That's happened once before. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out what, uh, what the reasoning is here. Hold on a second. Let me, let me do something here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see here. I've got a. Uh, see, I'm frozen. I'm frozen. Uh, Alex, uh, let's see. Camera, camera. Okay. Then I go and I push. Uh, push it like I'll go with another camera. Okay. And then we do that. And then I do this. And I think we should be okay now. There we go. Okay. I don't know. Why did that freeze? Why does that freeze? I have no idea why it freezes. I don't understand. I don't need this kind of stuff. Uh, but I, I know how to fix it, so what the hell, you know. Anyway, um, I guess it's time to go talk to some people out there. Uh, last night's show, I, uh, eh, boy, uh, what a, what a uh, cluster, you know what, last night's show was. Um... Uh, I, um, uh, uh, first of all, I want to say something. Uh, I don't like it when people gang up on somebody else, okay? Um, I try not to gang up on anybody, you know. I mean, I may kid Phil, I may kid a lot of people, but I don't like to gang up on them. And last night I felt that a lot of people here unfairly ganged up on Robert Natale. Uh, so much so that I've heard from him today about it, and he's never calling again because, quite frankly, he says after the way he was treated last night by the panel, he doesn't want to come back. Now, I don't think it was the entire panel, but uh, there were a few people there that were um, kind of being uh, mean and whatever, not the least of which was Phil. Uh, but uh, Phil was having the fight with Robert, and I think it was just Robert, but he felt that a lot, some other people were also uh, saying nasty things to him. And I don't think Robert was, uh, was guilty of anything. I think he came and he, he found out that Phil was on the show, so he asked him some questions and Phil didn't answer them. So, I mean, that was really what went on, but it, was so, it got so ugly. And then today I hear from Robert, who was just absolutely beside himself uh, because he felt that he had been treated poorly, not only by you, but by me as well, which I don't understand because I was defending him uh, throughout the whole thing. But uh, nevertheless, he was really hurt by it, and I don't like to see anybody be hurt by this program. But I got that problem, right? Now I got another problem with somebody writing me, and I, you know, I... It's like um, the show's over at, uh, at midnight. And uh, when I, the show's over at midnight, don't send me emails trying to make uh, the side of your argument or whatever. I'm through, I'm off, I'm off the clock. You wanna talk to me about stuff, you can talk to me about it here. But at that time, I'm, I'm off the clock. Does that make sense to any of you? I imagine it does. Anyway, I just, I, you know, and I feel bad that, that Robert felt bad, and uh, I feel bad that he's not going to call again because he, he is an intelligent sort, and I like hearing from him. 
but um, you know, uh, it it's just I don't know. It's it's um, it's making me wonder about this whole thing and the way in which I've created it. If it's starting to get to a point now where it's hurting people, it's time to put it to sleep or at least to recreate it in a new form. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do, it may be this week and maybe next week, but uh, every uh, Saturday night I have a very nice conversation, and it's between four of us. It's uh, with uh, Josh Wheeler, uh, pa Patrick Blazik, and, and Kevin. And we sit around, we just talk. We just do a Zoom and we talk. We talk maybe for two hours sometimes. Maybe it goes even longer. Uh, and I suggested in the last week, I said, you know, this goes so well. Let's see if we can kind of recreate it for everybody on the, on the, on the 1030 show. So I said, one week, let's just do what we do. I don't know if we're going to be able to recreate it. Uh, th that's what I want to find out. But uh, we just got to forget that you're out there and just talk like we would talk with each other and hope that it works out good. So anyway, that's the... Uh, uh, I, that's one of the things I'm thinking it's doing. There are a couple of others, but uh, this this is the, what happened last night was not pretty, and uh, I uh, I am was not happy with it in the least. Anyway, let me. There are only a couple of people who want to get on right now, so let me uh, let me just uh, admit them uh, to the show, and uh, I have to. Uh, let's see here. I have to make this view into a gallery move. I, move mode. I don't know why I have to change that, but I do. And here's our panel. Hello, everybody. How are you tonight? Hey. Okay, you're all right? Yeah. yeah. How's it going uh, where you are, uh, Charlie Wallace in Texas? Well, we had one day of cool weather yesterday, and now it's back close to 100. So yeah. It was a pretty nice day today. I, uh, I, took, oh, I had trouble getting out and walking today. I don't know why. It was just not it was just hard getting myself out the door but once i did i was i took about a mile and a half walk but but here's part of what i did okay let me explain this to you you know what that is that's like a a visa card um a debit card with 50 bucks on it let me tell you what happened okay um marjorie comes back and says to me uh, she went out to go get some pots or something at the local store. Who is Joe? I wonder who Joe is. Let's see. We'll find out here. I'm always, whenever I see somebody new jumping on here, is that you, Joe? Joe? I don't see anything happening. Joe is not, he's connecting his audio. Joe? Are you there? Joe, going, 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 gone. There we go. Uh, I got rid of Joe. I, oh, Alan, what happened to Alan? You got rid of Alan. Not got, Joe. Joe is still there. Uh, 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 Joe is still there? Where's Joe? Oh, there is Where's Joe. Alan? I tried to get rid of Joe. I went up here to Joe, and then I go put in waiting room, and... Uh, Joe is now in the waiting room, and while he's in there, I'll remove him. Okay, there we go. All right, okay, don't report. Okay, good, good. Anytime I want to get rid of somebody, I have to go through a bunch of things. Anyway, I got this. Here's what happened. Marjorie got one, too. How do we get $50? Mm -hmm. Well, we have to submit to a nasal swab and a blood test. Out on the street, up around 112th Street, they had this whole thing where they, uh, where they were uh, 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 doing this thing where they were taking blood te tests, asking you some questions for a questionnaire, and taking blood tests and doing a nasal swab. Uh, and um, what is going on here? Everything is weird on me tonight. Jeez almighty. Just said there was some problem with, with my show. Anyway. Where was I? Oh, so I had to I had to answer a whole bunch of questions. It took about twenty five minutes, questionnaire, and then uh, I went over and they drew some blood. For, they couldn't get it out of my arm, so finally I got them to go through my hand here. And um, uh, also they um, let's see here, what else did they do? Uh, they uh, yeah they did the nasal swab, both noses, 
And uh, they said they let me know the results if there if there were any negative <laughs> results. What is that? Who's that? Who's that? What is that? Somebody's hacking or something. Huh? What? I, I have no idea. Uh, somebody hacking up a hairball. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's somebody's signal here. I don't know. But anyway, so they gave us fifty dollars for doing that. Yeah. So sorry, it was me. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, that that was um, uh, so. So we got fifty bucks for uh, for giving ourselves up to medical science. This was like Columbia University was doing this. So what the hell? I didn't mind doing it. I thought it would be wonderful. Uh, I heard the swab that you stuck in your nose. The mm -hmm. urologist used on his finger, the one with short fingers. <laughs> You you were talking. To, you don't if you, uh, if you have to explain a joke, it isn't worth telling. Uh, other people got it. it you, you were you were talking to Kravitz just now, talking about your urologist had small fingers. Yes. Yeah. So the guy with small fingers put a swab on his his finger. That's with pushing it. Okay, sorry. That's that's stretching it. Okay, that's stretching sorry. it. I, Saying I heard that the I, beginning. What what was what would happen? What happened? I heard the beginning of the show. Robert was. Did, did he get upset? I'm, he was, I'm was upset. Kidding. Yeah, he felt you were putting him down too. Well, wait. Can I defend myself here? No. If this guy is hot. I'm going to say that he's hot. Didn't he say about a week ago? Oh, I was going to call in, but Tony was talking about his mother, and I didn't. No, want I didn't. Him. I don't think I said that. I don't remember that i don't remember yeah, he, I do. he said that it was said on the air no i do he, i remember it yeah no, he I, said I, that. I no he said remember. he tuned in and tony and tony was a little uh was, had a little too much coffee and it was just yeah. kind of it was kind okay. of okay wait a minute so, wait a minute hold on a so second. wait 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 no i'm gonna no, say no, something no, no. it's hey, all right hey, it's my hey tony tony it's my show Fuck you. i'm allowed to defend myself he makes a comment about me on the air I don't care. And Phil puts him down and he. There we go. Okay. I like that. Have him tell me to go fuck myself. Okay. All right. That's going to happen. Uh, it's not going to happen. Let me see here if Tony can, is still there now. Uh, yeah. I, 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 he can now join back. Are you going to be nicer to tell me to go fuck myself? Well, wait, 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 hold on me. a second. Hold on a second. Are you are you going to apologize for telling me? To I apologize, fuck you? but you're <laughs> cutting me off while I'm talking. No, I cut you off because you said "fuck you." Yeah, because you're saying no. He did while well, he did say something on the air because you all said it. No, no, I'm just no, laughing because no, no, no. What he, he said. Something, I don't care. I, and then you know, I don't. I don't need this shit. You know, I but, really don't need it. What do I? But I have a sense for? of humor. He cries like a woman. There we go. He, he mentioned why well, he didn't. He mentioned me on the air, and I didn't care. All I said was nothing that about he you. He tuned Alex. in. He tuned in. He heard you. On yeah, a, I called him a pussy. Will you let me but fucking finish? Me Will you let me finish, Tony? Yeah. Can you shut up for a minute? All right, go ahead. I said that he tuned in and he heard you on coffee and a whole bunch of other things, and he just said it wasn't the night to call. That's so all he, he wait a minute, that? That's that, all that's he it. said. If you don't want to call, then why put my name to it? Who the fuck is he to even say that? Don't call. I need a reason why he doesn't want to call. Well, you, you were. Call. You, so you, no, that's like me saying, okay. oh, I don't want to call. I say, call can I say the night, the night, the the night that you were all amped up on coffee, I wouldn't want no, to. But what I'm trying I, to say is going to listen? Are you going to listen? Tony, are you going to. He doesn't have a sense of humor. That's what I said. Tony, are you going to listen to me? Yeah, but he's an asshole. I How's that? Oh, well, now you solve the whole well, he's problem. Getting, no, he mentioned my name. Oh, I'm not, you Why saw, even say anything You solve the whole I problem. I don't call. I don't say, well, I'm you not saw, calling. Well, you saw Robert's it. on the thing again. I don't call. Tony, what? you were so hopped up on coffee that night. If I was thinking about calling, I wouldn't have called. And, yeah, you know what? Sometimes I'm joking. It's all right when he... I can't believe nobody has a sense of humor. This is fucking funny. What? Man. I have to have a sense of humor about running no, the show? No, because... And, and, you know, you just did... But to here's a question. Here's a question. He, if I don't want to call, I don't mention that he acts like an asshole. I just don't call. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you're going to mention my name, Robert, then I'm going to fucking mention you, asshole. 
And what, he can't take it? Then shut the fuck up. What's the matter? What, he can't tell? Oh, Phil yelled at me. Oh, my God. So what? Maybe you deserved it. What, everybody's got their knickers in the night. You know, when the Lenny Bruce got fucking canned. Get the fuck will get rid of you then. What? What was that about? What was? How did? What did well, Lenny Bruce? He cries like a bitch. Well, I can joke around, but he uh, can't. What? Yeah, because you want to censor people when they when you don't like uh, what they say. But Robert can say whatever the fuck he wants. Are you through? Yeah. Fuck you, Robert. That's one of the reasons he uh, he he was unhappy. Well, when him. Robert mentions me on the air, I'll tell him to go fuck himself, so he can call me and tell that. He to didn't. My he didn't mention you on the air. Well, he said, well, I didn't call because he was all hot. No, up. I was I'm saying, joking, no, Robert. I was saying. Nothing you don't have. You're not listening, Tony. I'm listening. I don't really care. Are you, are you finished? Oh, I'm done. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's not towards you. I don't defend people. Like well, I you saw. told me to go fuck myself. Now I take it. Because you were interrupting me about Robert I, when I, I was my interrupting point you. So don't take it personally. Remember who runs this show, who pays I for do. the time, who pays for the And space I do that love you, in. Alex, but I'm allowed to defend myself. I, I take that back because I do like hmm. You don't have to get all mad at me. Hmm. I just don't like, you know, I'm just saying how I feel. Hmm. I just think he's overreacting, that's all. What's the big deal? I think you are. Not really, because I'm just giving it back. He can't take it. No, that's I, the I, difference. I think you're overreacting. Well, well I'm also and, joking, and, too, but I have a sense of humor. Quite frankly, I don't think this is a big game about who's uh, the bigger man or uh, who's a pussy and who's not a pussy. Well, uh, when he mentions my name, oh, well, I'm not going to call him a Did funny. he mention your name personally? He said it last wait night. Minute, I wait picked on him. Did yeah, he, he, he he didn't mention that. No, no, he didn't. I, I related. Because I was, I was, I related what had been said in okay. a in a post that he sent me in a message he sent me. So he didn't say it, Tony. Well, and gotta, I may have misinterpreted what he said. Whatever. And I'm so really you got a whole attitude about that. Not really. I think he's an asshole, but that's just me. Do you, how many times do you have to say you think he's an asshole? I guess as much as I want. Well, not as much as you want on this show. Okay. Well, I won't say it then. Yeah. Please. I would appreciate it. The man isn't here to hear you call him an asshole. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know? And I don't like pe people being dissed who aren't here. Okay. Well, I'll Do you think that's you. fair? I would defend you if you weren't It is here. fair. I, whatever. I'm not going to get yeah. riled up about it. Anyway. Anyway. Anybody can else have any? Else? What? Can we talk about something else? Yeah, please. Yes, please. <clears throat> well, I thought you had something. <laughs> I was just going to mention that we've, we've been on for 15 minutes, and the only person talking besides you is Tony. Yeah. He's talked a lot more than you did. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> she, I, yeah. So. Unfortunately, there's no way. There's no way that I can. I can. I wish um, Zoom would do this feature where you could uh, lower people's volume, uh, and I could, you know, I, or I could mute him. I, can I mute him? You can mute me. I can mute him. Yeah, but you can unmute yourself. See, once I, mute I him. apologize for yelling at you. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, enough of that. Enough All right, of that. you should know me by now that I can. Change. Isn't the weather nice today? Is they, anybody else yeah. going to call tonight? Uh, Kathleen? I mean, I wonder if Kathleen. I'm really I, not a mean person. Alex. Oh, Jesus. Can I just talk? Yeah, go ahead. What do you want me to do? I'm going to mute you. I would do that, yeah. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you. All right. <clears throat> okay. Anyway. Oh, Jesus. Ah. No. Anyway, and I don't know if Kathleen's going to call tonight because last night I think she got mad at me. Because I, quite frankly, did you agree with me, uh, uh, Charlie? That she was trying to say that race and ethnicity are two different things. No, I actually agree with her. <laughs> Why do you agree with her? Because race, and, and it, it, to me, race depends on, you know, 
I think there's three races. There's the Asian race. There's the uh, what used to be called Orientals, and there's the African race. You know. And then there's the Caucasian race. Well, there's also the Islamic race or whatever, the Muslim those are, race. Those are, are ethnicities. Or Arab race, yeah. But no, but those aren't ethnicities. You know, I mean, I, dis I disagree with you. Okay. I I'm think, just, uh, in no. other words, okay, you go in to apply for a job, and they can't put this on there anymore, but they used to put race on there. What do you put in? If Let's say you're a Chinese. You put in Chinese. If you're if you're from an Arab, you put uh, Arabic, okay. But if it says ethnicity, you probably say the same thing. So I don't know. Last time I applied for a job was thirty years ago. So yeah, and, but they did ask what race you were, didn't they? Back then, yeah. Yeah, back then they did. I think it's illegal now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. So. <clears throat> Uh, but, uh, but it says, uh, but it, uh, sometimes it said ethnicity, didn't say race. A lot of times they'll say I've never both. seen I've, that. I've seen it. I've seen it. What? A lot of times they'll have both questions on there. Yeah, yeah. But I think I, on the census they did. But I think she. I think she. I, yeah. I think she's mad at me now. So what am I doing this show for? So people can be mad at me? No. You know, I don't need to put up with that. Yes, John. So race and ethnicity are used to categorize certain sections of the population. In basic terms, race describes physical traits and ethnicity refers to cultural identification. Race may also be identified as something you inherit while ethnicity is something you learn. So it, but that's technically not, you know, that's just what it, it says. It technically the, makes them the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, more or less, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can they're used interchangeably, but you know I mean there's I don't know. Yeah. They're typically misunderstood to be uh, uh, don't fit into unique categories that are offered on forms with check boxes. So ra race is more narrow based on similar physical and biological attributes. Ethnicity is more broad based on cultural expression and place of origin. I was actually asked that today. Uh, when I got this uh, card, when I got you know got this bucks. test with the fifty bucks, they did ask me, "What do you describe your?" I think I don't know if they said race or ethnicity. I think they said race, and I said Caucasian. And then I said, oh, "I also had the choice that I prefer not to answer." So I said, "I prefer not to answer because I think that question, I think the reason the question was legitimate to ask in this uh, in this context was they were doing a." Uh, what do you call it, a uh, 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 um, survey, basically, of people who live in Harlem. And so I think race might have been impor an important factor. In other words, they're trying to say, okay, have you, you know, do you have your shots, for instance? Did you have your vaccinations? And to ask what race you are is important because they need to be able to say, hey, we had more blacks getting it than whites, or whites getting it than blacks, and Chinese are getting it in a disproportionate amount, you know. So I think in that case, I don't think there was anything wrong with asking. Yeah. Did they ask you where you lived? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I told I lived here in Harlem. I gave them the address. You know. They asked, the question was, do you live in Harlem or do you live in New York? Or do you live in... Well, they said we are asking people who live in this community. And so I said, they, and they said, do you live in this community? And I went, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a pretty broad question, isn't it? Well, no, not really. I mean, I, I did it up on 112th Street up near the Morningside Park, and that's yeah. still Harlem, you know. So that would be the, the community they're talking about. Yeah. And they weren't doing a survey of, you know, there's some people they said that were doing it downtown. For those areas, but they were doing it for our area. So I don't give a shit. I got fifty bucks. <laughs> you know, just for a little swab in your nose and uh, a, a, a needle in my hand. Yeah, yeah. Why not? They that did. Was easy. They, they did the blood test to see if I had any uh, uh, what do you call it? antibodies. 
and they did the nose swab to see if I had COVID, which I don't think is going to come back, you know, positive. Did you go back the next day and get another 50 bucks? I would have. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess I, uh, it, well, no, but, but in our household, we made 100 bucks today. Yeah, because she right. did fifty and I did so, fifty. That, that would almost pay for the tennis channel. <laughs> you're, you're right. Very good point. Very. Good I know point. it's a touchy subject, so you know, but it's kind of funny. Yeah, in case people don't listen to this show often, and I imagine most of you don't. Uh, I think everybody here on the show knows exactly what that meant. You know, it, but what happened was my, my wife accidentally subscribed to the tennis channel for $110 a year. So you're right. Yeah, two of these cards and about another 10 bucks, and we got the tennis channel. Yeah. yeah. So, <coughs> there it is. Uh, there's, there's the whole thing on top of it saying activate your card. which You I know, if, I, I don't know much about tennis, but if it's going to go on for a whole year and she's happy... I'll send you a $10 Amazon gift card, and you guys can... Well, I'll tell you what I do have here. I have a Costco $10 card. Well, so there you go. I'm getting all these cards that are adding up to yeah. quite a fortune. Yeah. Must be nice. Huh? Yeah. It must be nice. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. The only thing I get are bills. Well, uh, yeah, but I had to get... I, I, you know, I had to get a shot in my arm. Yes, uh, Charlie. I don't know if I told you this, but I actually got uh, seventy-five dollars for uh, United Healthcare because I got the COVID vaccination, and because I got uh, the shingles vaccination. Oh, really? Fifty dollars for the COVID vaccination and from my my health insurance company because they don't they don't have to worry about me running up a million dollar hospital bill. They, over COVID. They, they sent this to you as money that you could go out and spend. Yeah, just sent me a card like what you have, and I, I can spend it. Oh, really? It. Well, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute. What, who is that? Who is that? United again? Healthcare has, has well, our... Well, I uh, have United Healthcare. Where's my fucking card? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to tell Marjorie yeah, about this. I think she should call <laughs> United Healthcare and say, hey, listen, we got the shots. We hear that a friend of ours in Texas got a, <laughs> what, $75 card? It was $50 and also, also, we have the shingles vaccine you know uh, thing as well vaccination. i got i got both last year too i didn't get any money right are you I both the shingles and and my, uh, well wait a minute are you united health care no kaiser well fuck you then yeah, yeah well fuck you. you know i mean uh, if the 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 bonus at at, at uh, kaiser <coughs> is that you're lucky to be alive so. and you don't even get get a kaiser car anymore oh, remember the kaiser car <laughs> remember the kaiser darren it had lip- i couldn't drive when the kaiser car came out jeff wait a minute it had a ca- it had it didn't have lips on the front yeah yeah no. kaiser darren is the kaiser darren a very pretty car yeah but the lips wow. on the front that was kind of yeah. ugly kind of looked yeah. like the car could blow you but didn't the wheels like slide open I don't know. No, I yeah, from the front to the back. You know, there was a car which they made a movie about called the Tucker, in which uh, he did a lot of stuff which today is considered. He put in seat belts. He had you know all kinds of safety devices and made a much more safer car. Glass that would uh, come out rather than break. Um, you know, pretty good stuff. So. Last that would come out rather. Oh, we, I mentioned cars, so here comes uh, J- Jack Bishop. Oh, Jack. Yeah. 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 So you don't have to worry about pieces of glass flying all over the right. place. Right, and he also had. Oh, uh, somebody hit your your car window with a baseball or something that wouldn't break; it would just pop well, out. Well, also you had you had headlights, but they also had a, a headlight in the Jack. middle, Called that the when you would turn the wheel, the light would go in the direction yeah. that you were turning. Light the way you turn it. Yeah. Well, yeah, they only old. made 50 of them. And long before my time. Well, go see the movie Tucker. Francis Ford Coppola did a movie called Tucker. Okay. And there were only 50 of them made, and in this movie, I think he was able to dig up 40 of them. Wow. Really? Yeah, yeah. And they were still working. I mean, they're very, very valuable cars if you have one. You know. You remember the uh, Tucker, uh, Jack? Yeah. Sure, I remember it. Uh, you know, as an, as an old car fan, yeah, uh, uh, they didn't actually finish 50 Tuckers. They had 
uh, 48 or so that they put together, and then there were two that they never finished. Oh, okay. They were just at the factory. Hey, but I heard you guys talking about getting money today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Black Avenger beat all of you boys. Oh, oh no. What happened? Uh, <clears throat> what, he gave I blood? What? Uh, Nah, nah, nah. Now they wouldn't want my blood because they said, "Wait a minute, this guy was in San Francisco." This in the week, 60s. this week, I've, this week I've been giving my blood a syringe at a time. It seems because on Monday they uh, drew it for my uh, PSA, and today they drew it to do this thing. So, well, I got a call last week from a um, health screening service mm -hmm. that asked me to sign up for a three years. Oops, what's that? Ooh. Hang on here. Ask me to sign up. See, that's my notice to get into the studio to be with Alex Bennett. Uh, sign up for a three-year study on a new drug. Really? Oh, really? And they're pay. Uh, I I have uh, four visits a year for three years to the doctor's office. They're going to pay me two hundred bucks for each visit that's live. They're going to oh. pay me. Fifth, yeah, fifty dollars for each online visit, and twenty five dollars for when I'm supposed to call in once a month to give them an update on how I'm feeling. Little under fifteen hundred dollars. And, and, and what is the drug? Well, the drug is an antiviral, uh, antiviral for some kind of uh, uh, respiratory infection that we old codgers get. I never heard about it, but they got my name through uh my cardiologist they were looking for men of a certain age who had had uh bypass surgery oh, you had bypass? Oh. And, oh yeah years ago man. damn it i haven't had bypass surgery oh. now you I don't feel, want it i, you I don't feel want unlucky it. you don't want it you yeah. break your ribs oh it's like being uh they break your ribs don't they yeah, yeah. Jack and oh, they, well, they break the breastbone they spread the ribs back it's like being the it's like it's, it's like a it's like a barbecue. It's like a barbecue. Yeah. My yeah. uncle had Alex. He had quadruple, but it was bad. I they had, a, I, I had a quadruple. Whether you have quadruple, you know, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Letterman had quintuple. Mm. That's a lot. Letterman? Quintuple. I, that, it, I never heard about that. Yeah, it's quintuple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is, this, he, mm. is this new drug, Jack? The stuff they get out of the earwax from dogs' ears? No, it's the stuff. It's the stuff they get out of Trump supporters uh, once they get through delousing them. <laughs> That's better than my line. Yeah, <laughs> what but, was your line? But anyway, uh, uh, so uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, he, you're a member of the Zipper Club, aren't you? Yeah, because they have it in the chest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the Zipper Club is responsible for <clears throat> me quitting swimming w without a t-shirt on because it's it's pretty bad looking. Well, let me ask you this question though. Um, uh, when you did that, mm -hmm. uh, 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 was it a long recovery for you? It's so uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, it, yeah, yeah. It, it took me about six months to get back up on all hind legs. Mm -hmm. I, I got a call one day from a, a relative who asked me, Hey, how you feeling? This was about a week after the surgery. Mm -hmm. And I, told this guy I said look today i feel so good i could whip any two-year-old that came into oh the yeah bar. oh yeah no i hear people say they feel great that way but you know there's still a recovery period there's no oh yeah but the, the recovery you know getting like i said back to full strength was about six months mm -hmm. yeah but uh yeah. i was weak as a puppy for about the first three weeks. <laughs> by the way we have a new game we play here oh, and no. it's called you, what you, is brian neary eating did he bring enough for everybody? No, no, no. See that? no. Wait a minute. No, wait, wait. Oh, what's that? Oh, there's a Kaiser Darren. That's the right. Kaiser Darren. Darren Kaiser. Yeah. 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 Kaiser Darren. Those doors. Those doors are in the car. They, they slid. The slide doors in. slide. They slide. They slide up into the. They fender. were like those sliding doors in an apartment. You know where they slid mm -hmm. into the walls. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah, let's like figure out what he's eating. Kaiser you're eating. You're, the wall. I I say you're eating some kind of fruit. Avocado. Yes. Yeah. Really? No, mango winner, mango. Uh, bong hits because for winner. It wasn't green; it was yellow. Yeah, you like mango? I love mangoes. Yes, mango like Grew you. Up on mango. Uh, yeah. Mangoes and and there's the second thing I'm eating tonight. A lime. An apple. Apple. An apple. 
No, apple. Granny Smith on Mango Street. Yeah. Do you eat the whole apple or you just eat a slice? <laughs> no, the whole apple. The whole apple. With no Nutella. Remember before when I was fat, I used to eat Nutella all the time. Well, wait a minute. Know, I eat apples without Nutella, and I'm fat. <laughs> It's funny. I never. That's what I said. I said before I was when I, when I was fat. I used to eat the Nutella all the time. Remember? I yeah, never. I, I don't eat the Nutella. I'm just fat. I never got into Nutella, but it looks like. What do you have there? Uh, uh, like a chocolate peanut butter. Uh, uh, Hershey's nuggets. Hershey's nuggets. Yeah, the sugar. No, no good. No good. Well, you know, what we do every night. We do a couple of pieces of uh, of sugar free chocolate. Mm hmm. So I can get my my chocolate jones taken care of but the uh, stuff has no carbs in it you know so huh. why not or if it does it's like a couple of carbs and that's it but uh um, yeah. yeah but you're on this big health kick right brian yeah and i'm getting injured i got a uh, pinched nerve uh, a couple of days ago i haven't been sleeping at all the last couple oh, of nights oh pinched nerves are are just wonderful aren't they I have like ten, it feels like tennis elbow all the way up my shoulder, my shoulder blade, my neck. I got I would, one years ago, right back here. Yeah, you know, I just yeah. I just did something. I went like this, and all of a sudden, I pinched my nerve. Right, so I go to a doctor, and he says you have to go in and have somebody do some work on your back, and the somebody did the stem and everything else on the back to get rid of it to help it, and then I had to go to Canada to the Montreal uh, Comedy Festival to do some shows from there. And I went up there, and I've got to tell you that when I got to the festival, uh, and between the time I was at the festival and the time I left, I didn't remember anything. Oh. Right? I was so drugged up to keep me going. They said, here's a drug that will help you. And I just, you know, I did my show, I don't know how, and I was, one day I had, uh, I'm trying to remember who I had on my show, but I had some comedian on my show, and I went, and uh, uh, I, blah, 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 about the Montreal Festival, and I said, were you, did you ever go to the Montreal Festival? He says, I was on your show at the Montreal Festival, Oops. and I couldn't remember the Montreal Festival. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, him. <laughs> yes. Hey, or, Brian, uh, to tell you how you're going to feel, the second worst pain I ever had in my life after the heart surgery was a pinch. Remember? Pin no, no, that was that was a diddle because I passed it on to my grandkids. <laughs> uh, 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 but was having a pinch nerve. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 horrendous. I in fact. When I was at the Montreal Festival, I would do my show and then I would just go back to the hotel room and lie in bed and try to find a comfortable position that didn't yeah. cause the pinched nerve to bother me. And they yeah. gave me this drug, which then made me loopy, so I couldn't take it before I did the show. Mm -hmm. And it was terrible, it was just terrible. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Alan. More proof that exercise is bad for you. Uh, I, I've been exercising. Uh, my, uh, my my healthy choices. I haven't been exercising. Uh, so. Do I look not like I used to? Do I, I have been a little bit, but not like I used. To. Do I look like somebody who exercises, Alan? No. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't. Walking. I didn't exercise. I simply went like this to yawn or something, and the really? next thing I know, I'm getting this horrible pain in my back. You know. Oh. So. Yeah. Alan okay. always used to say on his show, "Your body." He he would think your body was only used for so long. You're like tires. Well, no, my feeling so was he I, always said that if you ever go yeah. exercise, you're wearing out your well, body. I said this. I said this to uh, what's his name, the uh, the uh, the workout guy. Uh, remember him, Jack Lane. Jack Lane. No, no. Uh, you know, uh, Richard uh, Richard Simmons. <laughs> Richard Simmons. Oh, you mean it? Richard I, I told Richard Simmons when he was on my show one day, I said, Richard, you know, I got a theory. And he said, what's that? I said, my thing's what you're going to remember now, Brian, that I mm -hmm. said. I said uh, that, uh, you know, um, if you don't use your body, it will last longer. Mm -hmm. And he was so shocked by that. I said, I don't work out because if I use it, I think you only have so many push-ups in a lifetime before you can't use your body anymore. That's what you Trump know. Trump said. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, welcome to your fifties, Brian. It's only going to get worse. Well, I've lived. Now, pretty I had shingles. I had shingles when I was younger. I had shingles really? uh, about eight years ago. 
Wow. Yeah. yeah. I got shingles. And I didn't, I, I didn't think I had ever had, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the chicken, chicken pox. Chicken pox. But apparently, I, when I was a kid, I may have had a small case of chicken pox because I had a girlfriend that then got chicken pox, and I didn't catch it from her. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, and then after that, I got shingles. So That's I mean. must have had chicken pox or just an insignificant case of chicken pox. Uh, that but if you were an adult and you had chicken pox, you would have known it. I had chicken pox no. at 30. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's late. Wow. And, Not good. Uh, uh, Not good. A kid that I knew, a little kid, five years old, gave it to me, sick for one day. Me, I was down for two weeks. Oh yeah. Well, this, my, my girlfriend, family, my girlfriend, when she got it at twenty three, I think it was the same thing. It was far worse. Finally, drug myself to a doctor because I didn't know what it was, and my doctor said, "Well, Jack, uh, I." think you may have chicken pox, but I've never seen chicken pox in somebody your age that was black. And from the way it looks, I don't want to touch you. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Because you were black or because of the chicken yeah, well, the, Because he was black, obviously. No, I looked yeah. like the backside of a Nestle's Crunch Bar. <laughs> oh, well, I just, you know, I, I got I got the, uh, the uh, shingles right around my hmm. eye. Oh, mm. and lucky you didn't lose. And I had a, I, I, I mean, I was in Mendocino and I went up to see a doctor who also wrote out marijuana prescriptions and, and had some great pot up there. Oh, jeez. But he, he saw this and he said, I'm glad you got to me because a day more, more, one more day and you might go blind. Oh, and yeah. he gave me the medicine and I took it and it went away. But <laughs> it was like right here, right around the eye. So. Yeah, and the pot was good too. Huh? Oh, the pot! Oh, it made it so much better, so much better. Oh yeah. yeah. At night, at night, you know, I had two pillows before. I went down to one pillow like last week, mm -hmm. and I noticed I was sort of scrunching up a little bit, and I think that's what did it. Yeah. And then uh, I went back to two pillows, but yeah, it's too late. Like you said, Alex, I can't. I can only sleep on my back, and I'm okay side and you try to move a little bit and you feel okay and then all of a sudden you just feel the pain start coming back i'd say go to a doctor and get him to give you a script to go see a physical therapist That's because they he, will then yeah. do they will then do the like stim and so on that was another thing that i learned that i i when i when i had this they did the stim on my back okay which is they put electric pads on there and then they go Bzz, Bzz, Bzz. they don't shock you or anything but they right. they oh, kind of no. need the muscles as it That's were cool. and then i found that after it for the next day my the area where it happened was kind of achy mm. and i said to the person like who was doing it why am i achy and he says oh that's because we're exercising the muscles I yeah. said, you mean you could take a whole bunch of these things and put them all over my body and have me just lie here, and I'd be <laughs> and you could I could do the exercise that way. And he said, maybe, but nobody's ever said they wanted to. I said, try me, you know, because I don't do exercise, and this way I can just lie here, and after it's all over, go, whoa, what a I wonder, workout! I wonder yeah. if you could use that for masturbation. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Why? Right? Why did you bring it to that level? <laughs> I don't know. It just is. Hmm? Because they use e stem devices. People have used them in sexual. Things. No, they like don't. Red, no, they don't. It's somewhere. for muscle. I know what it's for, but people use it. Where's the muscle on your dick? It doesn't have to be on your dick. Imagine putting this thing on your nuts. Hold on, my son needs to talk to me. <laughs> yes. <son. laughs> <laughs> Imagine having the electricity go through. Mm -hmm. oh. Hi. Hi. Hey, how you Hi. doing? Hey, kid. How you doing? This is okay. your daughter? I can't yeah. see. Yeah. Son. This is son. Right. Was that his daughter? No, that was okay. his son. Oh, with my son. Oh. Yeah. We didn't see it, much of him. Because we shouldn't talk about masturbation. No, his, his, his daughter it, in the it, room. Yeah. Yeah, his as son. he's going into the shower for two hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Hey, that I reminds me. How is Adrian, by the way? <laughs> uh, she's she's hmm? really good. She's uh. Hmm? She's doing good. She's uh she's in two dance classes now. Actually, she's, she actually she's in three right now. She's getting out of one, but she's in two right now. 
And the instructors are really good, really funny, really run, run around with the kids and work them. Like really he's training yeah, now, them. Now, turning. Do, do they do a little recital when they're through? With this? They will. Yes. Yeah. So actually, they're going to compete in January. You're going to so. be there with all the other parents with their cameras. Oh, yeah. I'm going to beat some <laughs> parents up if they talk shit. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Alex, you talk about not having a kid, you know, but. You know, at the playground, the first time that somebody, another little kid pushes your kid, oh my God, I was ready to find the you parent. Know, you know what you're, going, what you're going through is interesting because what you're going through is something that people went through long ago. How old were you when you had Adrian, which is your 48. first? 48. 48 when he had his first kid. Wow. So he's going through all this stuff now. You're just It's a whole different learning curve, right? And that, yeah, and then also Simon and Stephanie were five and seven mm -hmm. when I when Tiffany and I started dating. Mm -hmm. So I saw the five to seven, you know, those grow up. And so now I'm sort of filling in the gaps because now she's five. So now I can remember when Stephanie was five and now Adrian is five. Yeah. So yeah. free training. Yeah. yeah. Well, Just wait till she's just wait 14 till she, or 15. Yeah, yeah. Wait till she starts. And start. you got a real learning. Yeah. <laughs> wait till she starts dating. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Don't remind me. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I think every girlfriend. physical therapist I've ever had, I think that they're all sadists. Well, what was it? My friend David Feldman uh -huh. said uh, in his act um, that uh, he, um, uh, his daughter, uh, when she goes out on her first date at 35, yeah. <laughs> uh, that he is going to sit down with the guy who's going out with her and have a little discussion and say, you know, if you wind up having sex with her, you better take her out for coffee afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tell him I'm old, and if I go to prison, I don't care at this point. I don't point. care, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there 25, is 25 years in prison will maybe be better than what it's I'm It's still, going it's going to eat you alive when she goes out on her first date. It's just going to eat you alive. Yeah, but you know what? We have trackers. We have these hidden video cameras. Now. We have yeah, everything. but you. But the yeah, thing is, the thing that. is, the, exactly. the thing is, where you've got a problem is you know what it was like when you were growing up and what kind of a date you were. Okay. Yeah, when when I was part of the Three Musketeers with my friends when we were womanizing girls, <laughs> one uh, my one friend got a girlfriend, got her pregnant, and yep, bingo, the first he had was a girl. <laughs> he deserved it. <laughs> I guarantee you, though, there's one great moment that'll come in your life. We have a 32 year old granddaughter. Mm, wow. And she has a 13 year old daughter. And for Father's Day, I got a call from both of them. Mm -hmm. And after uh, my great grandchild said, love you all that, my granddaughter said, Grandpa, because we raised this girl, Grandpa, I want to apologize for all those years that you and Grandma raised me and I was such a <laughs> hell raiser. Oh. <laughs> and if any of the gray hair or bald spot that you have was caused by me, I'm so sorry. And she started crying. <laughs> wow. Because yeah. she's had that moment. You, you, you ever get that, curse. Jeff? You ever hmm? get that from oh, your yeah. kids? Oh, yeah. All my granddaughters are the same thing. From both Everyone is a teenager. Yeah. As yeah. soon as they get out to be like 16, you mm -hmm. forget it. We should have done this as a Father's Day show, shouldn't we? It's a little late for it. Um, 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 uh, Speaking about late, I got to run. I got to do a show. Catch you on the top no, of the hour. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll forget how to switch over if I don't, you know. Well, I say, okay. Well, okay. Thanks for calling. Hey, listen. You know what I got for Father's Day, Bennett? What? A collect phone call from my grandson asking for a hundred dollars. That's what you get from your grandsons and sons. You know what I got for Father's Day? Nothing, because I never but, was a father. Well, if you hadn't had that accident on the teeter totter, <laughs> and, and I feel I feel bad about that because uh, they have this whole day called Father's Day, and I can't have anything to do with it. Well, you know, I have no biological kids, but I got all these kids that I raised yeah, and me and a pal get together who like me never had any kids. And we have a happy on father's day, the week after father's oh, day. Oh, that's sit good. Around, that's good. We yeah. sit around and talk about, man, you know, we may have missed out on some things yeah. that we uh, would have liked, 
but we sure didn't have to put up with them diaper changes. Yeah. Well, do your kid, uh, 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 do, do your, uh, uh, Brian, do your kids come and feed you breakfast in bed on Father's Day? They do that? No. No. Nothing. They, no. Z no. Zero. It was Great America Day. So they, yeah. Yeah, it was Great America Day, so they, they were just worried about getting to the rides on time. <laughs> <laughs> Try it faster. Kids, what do you want? You know? Yeah. Jack, thanks for calling. Good to be here. Appreciate Catch you in a bit. Bye. Okay. Anyway, um, um, uh, uh, Trekker Steve, you don't have any kids, do you? You just have that damn dog, right? Can you hear me? Whoa. Steve? Hear Steve, can you hear me? No. No, you don't have any kids. I can hear you. I have no kids. No. No? Okay. Yeah, well, you know, join the I Have No Kids Club with me, you know. And I think, Alan, you don't have any kids, do you? I have no kids. Larkin, you have any? No. No, uh, Charlie does. I know. Um, Tony, Tony, Tony's lucky if he even had a chance to have kids. Anyway, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> now, now, uh, I'm behaving myself out. But you know, say a bunch of people here with no kids. This is interesting. Yeah. I, got you know, I feel like an orphan. You, you have three, and how many did you have, Charlie? Two, three, three. Oh, got three oh, kids. Oh. Yeah. Did they call you on Father's Day? Yep. Okay. My son called me at six a.m. Oh, well, that was nice. What did he call you? It wasn't nice. What I said wasn't nice. Oh, what, wow, what, really? You, why the fuck are you calling me at 6 in the morning? <laughs> right. Happy right. Father's Day. I never get up till 10 o'clock. Why, well, why did he call you at that hour? I don't know, because he was going to work. We're he, getting up at about the same job. time, Charlie. You get up at 10 there. I get up at 1 here. <laughs> oh, so one sort of <clears throat> to bring the show down at the end. <clears throat> no, sure. One sort of good thing about about having Adrian and having a real Father's Day again because <clears throat> my mom passed away on Father's Day morning. Oh, oh really? <clears throat> yeah, Damn. we were having a family and friends <laughs> over, so my 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 stepfather was out all night with his dad that just flew in. And then uh, I remember saying good night to her, and the next morning was Father's Day. So. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, yeah, it was, that. was a hard day. So, um, how many years? Have, ago, how many years ago was that? That was uh, 1980. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. so that was, was quite a while ago. Yeah, oh, yeah. You were young then. So, yeah, uh, yeah I was 13. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. My my father died before my mother. He died uh, at 59, uh, and uh, I don't know if this is nasty or not. But I kept saying to myself, "Why couldn't it have been her? I would have liked to have had him to a hundred mm -hmm. because." He was just, I just love my father, just adored him. Um, but she lived to be 100. Yeah. And, um, you know, she, so uh, I, I, you know, I had, uh, I had my mother that long. So when she finally died, uh, I, you know, I just went, okay, you know, she's 100. You know, I mean, <clears throat> I had her for 100, you know, I had her for till, till 100. And I can't, I can't be selfish and start crying and saying it's horrible because so many other people lose their parents at, at a much uh, earlier age. So, you know, I was very. My mom was thirty-seven, and so when I when I hit thirty-seven, it freaked me out because because <clears throat> okay. thirty-seven, geez, you know, but twenty years ago, something. Like Man, I've lived so much more of my life than from before. You know, when I and hit when I, more successful. When I hit fifty-nine. I was kind of going, oh, I got to get past this. You yeah, know? yeah. Got to get yeah. past this. Uh, and uh, by the way, my father died of something which today uh, it, he would have absolutely survived. Mm. And he had he had a pituitary tumor, which if you don't know where the pituitary is, if you take a <clears throat> line here and a line here where they intersect is where in the brain the pituitary is, which is very difficult to get to. No, they go through your nose. I know, because what mm -hmm. happened was a few years later, I met up with a woman, and she said, oh, well, last year I had a pituitary tumor. And I went, and you're alive? Because my father died of a pituitary tumor. They couldn't, they were hacking them apart, trying to get to it, and they didn't, you know. So he died of that. And yes, you're absolutely right. They, it's, they don't go through your nose. They go through the roof of your mouth. Oh. Okay. That's how they get to it. But they 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 do pituitary tumor operations. Eh, breeze now. They go in there just they do it laparoscopically. They suck the things mm -hmm. out of there. 
My, yeah. my father died in 1992 of a rare type of leukemia. Mm -hmm. Not so rare now. They have a cure for it. Yep, Ooh. yep, yep. So That's yeah. medicine for you. Well, here <clears throat> I am at 81, and I wake up every day going, well, what's going to get me? I mean, I got a, a note the other day from my doctor <clears throat> saying, uh, well, we, we did your PSA test, and uh, there's no detectable PSA. And I went, well, that's another bullet I dodged. You know, this and week. well, I go, but what is it now that's going to get me? Yep. You know, yeah. my heart's in good shape. I think everybody gets that oh, as they get do. older. Oh, yeah. it's your, you're healthy. You'll go to your 100 at least. Yes, well, I mean, scare us, John. but then I look at my mother when she was 100, what? and I don't want to be that, you know, right. drooling <laughs> at some old folks' home. You know, I, I'm, I mean, I'm afraid of death. But, you know, if I'm going to be alive and not know where I am, I don't know if that's living exactly. That's yeah. no good. Mm. So. No good. Uh, I, I, think, I think once you get to 70, you might as well just start counting your days. Oh, Thank no. You. <laughs> well, I think the golden years, I actually think the golden years are 50 to 70. Oh, really. the, go the golden years? The golden years are t 5 to 10. Okay. My mother, those I used to are, say those are the golden years where everybody it. dotes you on you. You poo in your pants. Yeah. And where uh, actually the golden years are when you're one and you can pee in your pants or shit on your yeah. parents and they don't care. Isn't that You know cute? what's funny though? You said 59. When I turn 50, I'm going to be honest because I'm not going to joke about it. I kind of feel ever since I turned 50, I don't take anything that serious anymore. Like I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm actually feel like my days are like actually. Like I'm in. Like, well, that's you very, don't know how much that's very nice, Tony, Tony. But if you know me, I take everything seriously. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But uh, I mean, uh, how do you? How Jeff? You know, getting old ain't for sissies, as as uh, Betty that's, Davis that's once true. said. It's not easy, is it, Jeff? No. Uh, because there are all the aches and pains, and you know, I got the neuropathy it, with it, the. It's a survival game. Huh? It's a survival game. Of well, course. it's a survival it's game, and trying to be as comfortable as possible. You know, all of a sudden things ache that never ached before. Life, life is a survival game. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, my dad used to say, at least you could wake up. As long as you could wake up and see and be able to walk and get out of bed, mm -hmm. be grateful for that. Because mm -hmm. you've aged pretty well. You have your hate, sight, I you have your mind, and you have your body. You still can walk a mile a day. And you're dead. I walked a mile and a half today. I mean, not many people 81 can do, I mean, honest, like, you know, I, I observe a lot of people. I mean, that's what my dad used to say. He, he said, if you can do that, enjoy the day. Then. Well, I never used to exercise, as I said, but I do now. Uh, I do, I do, I do 50 sit-ups a day. Wow. Oh, I know. Well, they don't say, and wow. It takes me 50, it takes me 50, <laughs> it takes me that many times to get out of bed. So uh, that, that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. End on that joke. End on that joke. That's good. Yeah. End on a, end end on a high point. But I still got exactly. forty seconds, so I gotta I gotta somehow <laughs> uh, top it, you know. But anyway, well, yeah, I, I met it la last weekend at my friend's house. His, he's taking care of his dad now. His dad's ninety one. His mom's ninety. They he lit, they he takes care of both of them now. Mm -hmm. They're Vietnamese. They moved over when he was 40 years old. He worked at the Ford plant, and then he lived there for 40 years in Michigan and just moved to California just this last year. Wow. It's amazing to speak to a Vietnamese that old, and he speaks English, because usually they don't speak English. They, you know, it's all Vietnamese. So to hear the stories that he was talking about is pretty amazing. Yeah. Is your wife Vietnamese, Robert? Uh, your, wife, your, your wife? Your wife? Robert. Uh, Robert. Robert. Bro Brian. Uh, Brian, yes. Yeah, oh my God! Somebody's thinking about Robert tonight. Sorry. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is. okay. Hey, listen. That's our theme playing. Charlie Wallace. Always good to have you here. You're always the first one waiting to come on, along with Trucker Steve. Okay. Uh, good to see you guys. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Jeff. Always nice having you here. Same thing with our friend, uh, uh, Mr. Irving. Uh, did I get that right? No, let's just call him Bong, Bong Hits yes. for Jesus. Yeah. Uh, hey, thank you uh, very much uh, uh, to our good friend, uh, Alan. Uh, to uh, Char uh, uh, Boy, I'm just so out of it tonight. Tony! 
<laughs> and to Brian and to Trucker Steve. Okay, I got through it now. All of you, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. We'll have another one again tomorrow night. It's a Thursday night edition of our show. Uh, Jack Bishop is next for the intersection. Uh, he'll be here taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night at uh, 1030, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always... If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, if you haven't done it, go out and get a vaccination, okay? Make yourself safe and the rest of the people around you as well. We'll talk to you tomorrow.